Brian Von Vier here, back at it again with another set of D&D stories, and today I'm exploring something that I really can't wait to dig my teeth into. But before we do, remember, you can go ahead and submit any story to us on r slash Mr. Ripper or in the comments below. Hey, if it's relevant to the today's video, go ahead and post it down there, and if it isn't, still go ahead and post us a comment with your story. We do read those. With that said, what was the best way you ever saw a DM shut down that player? Our that guy was a real pain in the behind, as he would throw tantrums when his cleverly thought out plans never worked. In reality, he was a wizard and only spammed fireball, fireball, fireball with the occasional magic missile, complaining when he ran out of slots. Poor baby. We all, the DM especially, were done with the crap. So he worked with me to make a <laughs> special encounter for the wizard. <laughs> after going to the tavern, after a dungeon crawl and doing all of that, everyone left for the inn. Everyone but the wizard and myself. A sort of gang or cult entered the tavern and started causing all kinds of problems. The wizard, overconfident from the <clears throat> successful dungeon crawl we did earlier, walked up and uh, not so politely told them to screw off. One bar fight later and the wizard is bleeding out on the floor. The player is throwing a tantrum and is basically screaming at me to heal them. Oh, white mage, cleric, paladin, somebody save me. Quick note. So far, I've roleplayed my character as the stereotypical shy healer. She'll make sure everyone stays in top shape and will do what's best for everyone. Another thing is that she'll always bless enemies before killing them. Keywords, so far. My character slowly walked over to his body on the floor. Oddly enough, the gang and cult is doing nothing to stop me from approaching him to heal him back up. I begin to say, I'd like to lower my hand to his face and cast, before he starts to explain how he gets up afterward and casts a spell. The DM says, wait a moment, let Luna, my character, finish. I couldn't help but smile as the DM knew exactly what I was about to do. I calmly say, with a soft smile, Luna whispers in the wizard's ear, burn in hell and casts Inflict Wounds. Holy shit, I love it. The look on his face was priceless. What followed was an amount of yelling, threats, slurs, and then him being kicked from the campaign. Good on you. We were planning on revealing that I was part of the cult in a much different way, but it was a lot sweeter to have Luna get revenge on the wizard, who treated her like a heel bot rather than a person. Also, watching the other players having to roleplay normally, knowing one of their members was part of their cult they were opposing, was incredible. That is how you solve the conundrum of a that player. Props to you and may Luna live forever. My first time as a DM, slight dragon of Ice Spire Peak spoilers ahead. Also, DLDR included. So, I already love this person because they included a spoiler tag and a TLDR. Good on you. So, this is my first session as a DM, and third playing ever. My group entered Nomengard to clear out the man-eating monster, a mimic. So, they got to the room with the mimic, which was disguised as a barrel. Now, this player, let's call him Rogue, since that's what he was playing, tells me he wants to, well, fuck the barrel. As a joke. Ha ha. I told him to roll performance. 17. No proficiencies. Now this roll didn't matter, but it made what happened next all the better. Now the mimic, according to the module, is hidden as one of the eight barrels in the north. The player said he wanted to bang the third barrel off the left wall, so I rolled a d8 for it. 3. Another player who was watching me occasionally and giving advice, since he was also a DM, and watch this whole next part go down. So I tell the rogue that as he unzips and goes to stick his shalong in the spigot, it morphs into a sludge-like substance and grabs him by the ball. <laughs> this was my first time ever doing this, and I did so with a straight face. Roll initiative. 
Nana gave the Mimic a surprise round, hit and dropped the rogue to 2 HP. Then, in initiative order, rogue goes first. He asked if there was any way he could escape, so I told him that the Mimic's limbs were sticky, so he would need some way to sever the point of contact. Without thinking, the rogue immediately says, I'd like to cut off my testicles with my dagger. The whole table laughs. He rolled plenty high enough, I gave him a low DC, and to be nice, I said he only took one damage from it. Fast forward a few rounds and the Mimic was too occupied with our cleric duo to finish off his target, and the sorcerer patched up the rogue's wounds. They defeated the Mimic, but the rogue lost his fellas in the process. TLDR, first time DM has to deal with a horny player. Horny player tries to bang a Mimic, gets grabbed by the balls, and has to castrate himself to escape. Also, side note, I've been a long-time supporter. I love your guys' content. Keep up the amazing work. Hey, if you're out there listening into this story, I just want you to know that from me, Brian, I, I really appreciate that, and I'm very grateful to be able to narrate for all of you. So I love you, and I love everybody else out there who enjoys our stuff. And to even those who don't, I still love you too. My friend said that they once had a girl who'd cheat by rolling where others couldn't see, and then tell them the result. Eventually, the DM gave her a fake D20 that only had one through eight written on it and told her to roll it. She takes it without looking, rolls it, called 16 or something and got called out for cheating. Edit. Now that I think about it, I think she actually just rolled and grabbed the die really fast before anyone else could get a good look at it. Rolling out of sight wouldn't have ever been allowed. I was that guy. We don't really have a lot of people strictly outing themselves as that guy, so proud of you. I was a half-work rogue who kept texting my DM, my brother, which PC at the table I wanted to pickpocket next, and refusing to participate in any combat because it didn't fit the backstory of being a coward. <laughs> During our second session, after failing for the third time that day trying to pickpocket the paladin, and several other less-than-perfect attempts on the other players, he looked me straight in the eye and said, The paladin breaks both of your arms and no one wants to heal you. I looked around the table to see our healer, my real life wife, nod in agreement. Thankfully, COVID happened before our next session, giving me time to retcon his personality. I would have retconned the whole character and started over. You learned an important lesson that day. Don't piss off the healer, especially when it's your real life wife and you'll die in game and sleep on the couch. One of my friends was running a campaign and had a player who kept intentionally doing things to break his game. So I said, let me host a one shot. We'll see how fast he breaks. Ooh, <laughs> I got chills from that. My friend agreed and brought everyone from his campaign to mine. As expected, this player started murder hoboing and destroying everything in his path until he got to the creature I made. It was a large bird-like creature that was completely friendly until you dare hit it. The guy was cocky and everything until he landed his first attack on it. I started laughing when he thought it died. He questioned why I was laughing. <laughs> why are you laughing? I like murder. Until I told him about this CR-23 abomination I'd created called Owl, the god of the rings of chaos. He tried to attack it again, it deflects his spell entirely, instantly knocking him to 2 HP. But then, it was the Owl's turn. One nat 20 later and I described how his character was brutally murdered and how his soul suffered for the rest of its eternity. His angry reaction was priceless, I will never forget it. Oh, he tried again requesting a new session and uh, fell for the same trick again. You know... I, <sighs> People with a Vegeta complex, as I call them, they really need to stop. Heavily armored paladin that I knew would be problematic. First session's supposed to start with them walking into town, and there are non-stop interruptions. Fifty minutes in, I haven't even mentioned the town they start at because I get interrupted each time. I mute him in Discord and say I'll unmute when I'm done describing the town. I finish, unmute him, and they start walking and he starts trying to derail the party and avoid the first town altogether, met by uh and uh. I tell him he falls into the town's moat, and he'll be back next session. 
Then I kicked him from the call. Kind of a dick move, but he came back next week and behaved a bit better. Hey, that's not a dick move. Sometimes people need a good kick in the ass to realize they're doing something wrong. And if they don't respond to it, well, then there's a problem. I am a player in a campaign where a paladin, Oath of Devotion, thought he could do whatever he wants without consequence. One session, my DM had enough and gave him subtle hints that something would happen if he continued on this path. Of course, he didn't listen. Why would he? And for the next few sessions, the pattern continued. A few sessions later, we were about to fight a group of bandits. He was like, yeah, piece of cake, and attacked one of them, hitting him with a nat 20. He tries to add in a third level divine smite, but our DM said, as your sword strikes down on the bandit, you don't feel the divine power flowing through your body and empowering your attack like before. After we got rid of those bandits, the paladin player wanted to know what the hell happened there. Our cleric said, you might want to look at your holy symbol. He looks. It was cracked in the middle. He continued doing things that led to him breaking his oath. So his source of power, <laughs> it was gone. Now I am curious what the Grand Master of his order has to say about that. The player asked if there was an explosive or ammunition at shop in town. I said yes, and he says, I cast fireball. <laughs> yeah. I then told him that he woke up in a cold sweat in the tavern after having a dream in which the event unfolded. That's a real good way to just retcon and circumvent the situation and it might be a gentle enough slap on the wrist to make the player go, yeah, I'm not doing that again, my bad, sorry. I was a player in a party where we were trying to stop the god of the underworld from sending demons from hell. <laughs> Here comes that guy, TG. TG joined the party halfway through the campaign when we were in a labyrinth trying to retrieve an orb of life. You can pretty much guess what it does to revive a wise old man. TG grabs the Orb of Life, which was a one-time use item, and uses it on his rat who died three sessions ago. Why would you do that? We need it to get that artifact from the dead man. I did most of the work. It's mine. I can do whatever I want with it. That's bullshit. We all did the work while you sat in the corner the whole time. After a lot of arguing, the DM spoke up. While you were all arguing, the labyrinth started to collapse. All of you, but TG notice, and start running. TG, your character has been crushed and killed. You're out of here, and please never come back. Yay! TG started throwing a temper tantrum and stomping on the DM stuff. What the fuck? You never step on a man's stuff. Let's just say he was never invited to play again. And a few years later, DM claims that that guy still has temper tantrums and never left his parents' house. Fuck that guy. Stop stepping on people's shit just because he had a bad day. There's better ways to solve the problem, man. Hey there, everybody. Brian Von VA. I genuinely enjoy stories like this because uh, justice and vengeance must be served. That being said, hey, leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and if you have a story to tell, do so in the comments below or in our subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper. Either one doesn't matter. We will look at both of them. If you want it on the comments, do it in the comments, though. We're right here watching. And as always, you can come say hi to me, Brian Von VA, over on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. I stream all the time. I talk all the time. So come say hi. As always, I end things on a positive. Listen, I don't advocate bullying, but I, when you have somebody who's going to be violent, nasty, rude, disrespectful, Tell them to get the fuck out of your party and never come back. That's a totally fine reaction to do it. Just don't bully the bastard, because you never know what's going on with them. But uh, it's like, like one of those stories where the guy was stepping on all of the DM stuff, or uh, when you have people cheating mid-game, or just throwing temper tantrums and like flinging shit around. You're dangerous, man. Stop it. Get some help. But encourage them to get that help before you cut them out completely, because uh, maybe they need that kick, you know what I mean? Some people need it. But either way, always try to be kind to each other. Always try to be nice to one another because the world's too fucking short to not do that. Love one another. You're all worthy of it, no matter how bad or how good of a person you are. Just breathe. Just breathe and try to be better.
And if you're already a good person, just do your best because that's all we can ever ask for. All the love, be safe, be happy. We will see you next time.